ready to story. Once upon a time, I couldn't see anything. I couldn't see for uh, uh, doodly squat. That's it. <laughs> and uh, the summer before I went to first grade, I thought I was a really big deal because first grade was a big deal. If it, I don't know if it was for you guys, but it was for me. I was going to go to school for a full day. I was going to wear the quote unquote big girl uniform. Um, I don't, those of you who went to Catholic school probably remember the jumper, right? And the Peter Pan collar and the sassy snap on tie, right? And <laughs> I thought I, I had a Garfield lunchbox. My mom took me to my first salon and I got my hair cut really like pixie short. I think it was just because my mom didn't want to comb it out anymore, but she cut it like pixie short. And I looked like Mary Lou freaking Redden. And I felt fabulous. And it didn't matter that I couldn't see any billboards or the stop sign that was in front of our house suddenly became blurry or I couldn't see the TV. So everybody saw like that, right? There was nothing wrong with me. Until I got to Sister Mary Brenda's classroom. And, you know, she wasn't scary or weird like a lot of the, you know, Catholic school stories that you would hear. But she was okay. She, I mean, this was post-Vatican II. This was a you know, folk songs for everybody, folk mass kind of nun, you know? And I didn't like her or dislike her, and it was okay. Until she had us write the quote-unquote Today story. And the Today story was something that she wanted us to do every day. She would write down on the board, and it was just a simple sentence about the, the day and the weather, and uh, maybe perhaps what we were going to be learning about that day. And... All the other kids got their pencils out and started to write, and I couldn't see anything. I couldn't see, everything looked like a blur. Every, I, I knew I knew how to read, but all the lines were squiggly and I couldn't, it was a mess. And all the other kids were writing away, and I, I couldn't understand why I couldn't. I thought, well, maybe it's a, maybe it's a right-handed thing, you know, because I'm left-handed. So I thought, obviously. So I thought, well, maybe it's a right-handed thing. And, that's why I'm not doing it. And then I saw my friend Patrick, who sat next to me, not that Patrick, but another Patrick, and <laughs> who sat next to me, and he could write with both hands, which I thought was really cool, but he had had his freaking Today Story done already, and I couldn't understand why. I was like, how did you do that so fast? But I could see what was on his paper, so I started to write, today, September 20, 1980. He's no copying, and he put his arm over his paper so I couldn't see. So after a month, about a, a month of this, about a similar sneaky tactics, uh, I started to even write, you know, my own today stories. You know, I'd write today is October fifth, nineteen eighty-three. It's sunny and this is dumb. <laughs> or, I, you know, I, I just couldn't figure out why all the other kids could see it and I couldn't. And after a, a long time of this, I. I think I finally, my parents got called finally when I started disrupting other aspects of the first grade. You know, like, we had to sing, I'd like to teach the world to sing. You guys all know that song, right? Maybe some of you don't, but we had to sing it. And I would make up my own words. I'd say, I'd, I'd sing, I'd like to teach the world to stink and <laughs> things like that. And I think my parents finally got called when I handed in a copy book that was what I saw on the blackboard, which was complete scribbles, and I dragged my arm across it, and it was all smudged and everything. And Sister Mary Brenda wasn't happy. My parents weren't happy. Sister John Eileen, the principal, was not happy with me. And my mom, my, and my parents were 30-something, were and they were overworked, and they didn't really have time for this kind of nonsense. My mom sat me down in her very pragmatic way and said, do you want to repeat the first grade again? Because that's what's going to happen if you keep doing this. What, what's going on? And my dad, who's a teacher, he's retired now, but said to me, you know, yeah, why are you doing this? And it was the first time someone had ever asked me why or why I was behaving like this, and I broke down. I said, because I can't see, because I have headaches. I can't see anything that's going on. I know I know how to read. The other kids can do it. I have headaches. I'm sick to my stomach, and I can't do it. So... My parents, out of, I guess, sort of, just to be rather safe than sorry, took me to a, an eye specialist who thought that my behavior problems and my headaches and my nausea and my, my, my vision problems were maybe a stem from something much worse. 
a degenerative eye disease or something like that. So he recommended that I go to the hospital for tests. And uh, that was my overnight stay at the hospital where my mom worked, you know, which was kind of cool because I got to meet all the nurses. And my friends sent me get well cards. And everybody sent me little gifts and presents. But my celebrity at St. Joe's Hospital in Carbondale was short-lived because, thank God, I came back with a clean bill of health. And, you know, nothing wrong. So the next step, my parents took me to uh, Dr. Jordan at Northeast Eye, who took one look at me and gave me the run-of-the-mill run exam and looked at my father and said, the only thing that this little girl needs is glasses, and she needs strong ones, and she needs them right away. So that day, we, my father and I picked out a really cool pair of Snoopy glasses, and they were pink, they had a little Snoopy on the side. And a week later, they came in, and when I put them on, I couldn't believe it. Everything came into sharp focus. I could see the billboards. I could see the Mifflin Avenue Bridge sign. I could see, I could see the, men, the men's and ladies' room sign. You know, I wasn't walking into the men's room. <laughs> you know, I could see the TV. It was great. And I remember riding home with my dad and like looking up into the sky. It must have been the fall, I guess, because there was a flock of geese up in the sky. And I said, Dad, look at those birds. I've never seen birds like that before. So that's the story of how something so simple was really something really magical to me. And, you know, eventually I, I, my grades got a little better. I didn't have to repeat the first grade. And every morning, the first thing I scrabble for are my glasses, and I put my contacts in. And, you know, they, LASIK surgery is kind of run of the mill anymore, but I, I don't think I'll ever get it, because I feel like my astigmatism is sort of part of me now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>